Hello, my friends. Welcome back to The Wholeness Shift. My name is Veronica. If you're new here, nice to meet you. I help people live intentionally, find their joy, and expand their consciousness. Today, we're talking about chakras. What's that, you ask? Have you heard people talking about them and you have no idea what they mean? Stick around because we're going to be getting right into that. This is part two in my series on energy. All things energy. We're going to be talking about everything energy. How to use a pendulum. How to have your spirit guides balance your chakras. How to do energetic cord cutting with Archangel Michael. All kinds of things energy. So make sure you come back if you don't want to miss that. But as I discussed in part one, the very baseline thing that we need to agree on is that everything is energy. You know, Einstein and E equals MC squared and quantum physics and all of that. It's important stuff. So even if you don't know all about energy, it's important to have at least a baseline knowledge of what this stuff means. Because whether you comprehend it all or not, it is your life, it is you, it is everything. And so it's important to at least open your mind to how this stuff works. There are motorcycles outside, it's summer in Cleveland. <laughs> so sorry if it gets loud. It's a nice day, somebody's enjoying it. Since everything is energy, that means that we are energetic beings. And so we are continuously both putting out and taking in energy from the divine. When you pray for someone, the energy goes out. When you pray for, your, for healing for yourself, the energy comes in. And the way that energy goes out and comes in is through your chakras. In simplest terms, a chakra is a spinning wheel of energy. It's a portal where certain subtle energies both leave and enter your auric field in your body. There are seven major chakras associated with the human body, and each one is associated with a place on or near the body, a color, and then certain body systems, disease processes, emotions, etc. And I'm going to dive further into that in a right away, sir, right away. Okay. Where were we? I'll make another video soon that deep dives into each one of the chakras so that you really can wrap your mind around where they are, what they're for, and then when they're out of whack, what to look for, that'll be upcoming. So I'll just do a very brief overview today. So when you're talking about chakras, they go from bottom to top. When you talk about your first chakra, that would be your root chakra, and that is located right by your tailbone or your lower spine, and that's associated with the color red. Your second chakra is located right in front of your pelvic region, kind of where a woman's uterus would be or maybe your bladder would be, and that is associated with the color orange. Your third chakra is right over your belly, and that is your solar plexus chakra, and that is yellow. Your fourth chakra is your heart chakra, and that is right over your chest heart area and that's associated with the color green. Your throat chakra is your fifth chakra, and that is right over your throat. Duh. <laughs> Duh. And that is associated with the color blue. Your sixth chakra is your third eye chakra, and that is associated with the color indigo, like an indigo blue, it's a deep blue purple color and that's right over the center of your forehead. And then your seventh chakra is your crown chakra and that is right on top of your head and that is sometimes portrayed as a 
like a really pale lavender color and sometimes white. Are you still with me? It's actually pretty simple once someone explains it to you and it clicks. It's really not hard to understand at all. Now the next thing you need to know is when a particular chakra gets out of balance or um, gets blocked in any way because you've been doing what you shouldn't be doing or behaving how you shouldn't be behaving or you have issues or baggage that you haven't quite worked out, those are going to get blocked, clogged up. You need a roto rooter on. <laughs> when, when they get blocked or out of balance, they can manifest in certain um, like physical ailments or emotional spiritual ailments. A good example of this is my throat chakra. Now when I first had my spiritual awakening and I first started meditating, my throat was always a mess. I was really prone to respiratory infections and bronchitis. My asthma was out of control. I had an extremely gravelly voice. I sounded like an old smoker sitting at a bar going, I need another martini. It, that's what I sounded like. <laughs> but when my guide had me start meditating on my throat chakra and explained to me that my throat chakra is really about speaking your truth with as much kindness and love and honesty as possible. And I started putting that into practice and I started meditating on my throat chakra and focusing on the color blue a lot. All that stuff cleared up. Now I could be honest, I'm a very direct person, but I'm also a nurturer and a peacekeeper. And so I will tend to not say what I'm thinking. I'll tend to hold it in and just try to be kind and peaceful until I've really had enough and then I blow up and I'm just kind of word vomiting all over and I had to stop doing that I still haven't gotten great at it but I'm way better than I used to be and I really I try really hard holding it in too much is not good for you blurting it out constantly is not good for you is it kind is it true is it necessary that old cliche is completely accurate. So once I started paying attention to these things, my voice cleared up, um, my asthma became under control, I really don't get sick often anymore. So I am a firm believer that that helped. What also shows me that it helps, and this is why it's important to know about chakras because it helps you get to know your body and you can pay attention to what you need to do. Your body gives you instant feedback. I had a rough day today. I've had a rough couple of days. <laughs> I've done a lot of complaining. I've done some gossiping, just and grumbling. It's a good word. I've been grumbling a lot in the last few days. And today, I don't know if you can hear it, but to me, my voice sounds extremely hoarse and gravelly. Like my throat just feels clenched. And that's because of my actions. I've not been acting in a way that keeps your throat chakra open and balanced so it's out of balance and the first thing that always happens is my voice tightens up and I start getting issues there. So I know from experience that if I go spend 20 minutes or so meditating on my throat chakra and I do my best to be mindful and intentional about the words that I speak, it's going to clear right up. But that's a good example of why it's important to know thyself and to know about your chakras and things like that. Because when you start getting different physical things going on, you can put two and two together and you can also do a lot to help yourself naturally. This all feeds into holistic living. And this is one of the ways that you can help yourself first. You can kind of give yourself a little tune-up. If you pay attention to this stuff, you can do things to help get yourself in order, at least to some degree. Disclaimer, I'm not saying if you have a legitimate issue not to go to the doctor, please seek medical attention if you need it. I'm just saying that as a way of daily maintenance, you can pay attention to this biofeedback that you're getting from your energy and your body, and you can make adjustments on the fly. 
So in a future video that will be coming soon, I'm going to deep dive into all of the chakras and what they mean, what to look for if they're out of balance, and how to help. So in the meantime, go find some joy and I'll talk to you soon.